It's not as cold in this part of the island. Maybe I can finally get my head on straight. I can hardly feel the pin in my fingers. My whole body is numb. I could hardly say the words on the page. I can't stop crying. They've taken away my heart. Stanley has been arrested for the bombing of Rory's pub. Someone must have set him up. I asked my father if he knew who would do this to Stanley. He just said that I should move on. Stanley won't live long inside prison. I nearly spit in his eye. I swear by all that's holy, if I find out that he had anything to do with Stanley being arrested, I'll burn him alive. What is that? Insects. Ha! Take that, you little fuckers! That tree... It's... monstrous. Everything is in place. But the air it feels hollow and empty in my chest. Oh, I can hear my heart pounding in my ears. In just a few hours, life as I know it will be over. But that's only if I'm very lucky. Otherwise, my life will just be... over. Today I'm rescuing Stanley. Oh, come on. Why is this locked? That water looks disgusting. We hadn't been to the ocean since spring, and it was a shock to see our tree so barren and frail. As we walked, Stanley wrapped his coat around my shoulders. It was still warm from his body, and I pulled the collar up to my nose to see if it still smelled like him. It didn't. It just smelled of dust and mothballs. Stanley said his father would bring him here and say, This is why we struggle. He thinks that now he finally understands what his father meant. But I wonder. I laid the jacket on the ground and pulled us both onto it. I just wanted to make him forget the rest of the day. I wanted to forget the rest of the world except for him. The grass was itchy and dry and the sky was as white as butcher paper. Neither of us bothered to speak another word. The cold wind would have just carried our words away. That water isn't freezing. It just fell. That cleared him away. be a shortcut to the top of the mountain.
The air is heavy with the stink of rot and the buzzing of those damned insects. I don't hear it so much as feel it. I'm afraid it might drive me mad. If I'm not mad already. There were so many people in the market, I couldn't hear myself think. I needed to get out of there. But when I asked Stanley to choose something for supper, he just replied with his usual, whatever you want. I wanted him to make a decision for once so I could stop thinking about absolutely everything all the time. The bags were so heavy and my hands were cramping, and someone close by smelled like goat. It may have even been me. So I dropped everything and let the bags spill all over the street. I didn't care. I'm sick of the crowds and the stink of curry and I'm sick of the hate. I want to walk through green grass. I want to feel cool air on my skin. Under a sky the colour of butcher paper. Molly works at the prison. She was worried about taking the job, but my father insisted it was good to have one of our own on the inside. He just wanted to use her. But it turns out, I'm the one putting her at risk. She got the powder inside, and there's a lad from the neighbourhood who will slip it into Stanley's breakfast. If he eats enough, the pain in his guts will be so bad they'll transfer him to the hospital. But if he eats too much... Those bugs are gone. What a jumbled mess. Now the path is clear. I try to stay awake. I keep my mind on... Before the plane crashed, you didn't... You didn't finish your story. About the time you stole the box of sweets. But I think I know exactly how it ended. Your dad... He knew what you'd done. He just didn't know why. Still, he never asked you about it. Never accused you of anything. So you never told him the truth. But it was always there, wasn't it? An abandoned space between you. Like an unfinished story. She sounds so weak. Hang on, Lena. I couldn't go to my father for help. He's all for letting Stanley take the fall. But the mad bastard with me today didn't know that, so he did everything I told him, including stealing an ambulance.
Molly called us about Stanley's medical transfer, which gave us a head start on the real ambulance. I looked ridiculous in the uniform, but our documents were perfect. So I kept my head up and let Stanley inspire my confidence. Even so, I nearly fainted when the guard wheeled him out on the gurney. He looked dead already. The guards loaded him on board, and I drove us away. Five minutes out, and the mad bastard dosed both the guards with anesthesia. And just like that, Stanley was free. Oh, shit. That water smells. No wonder there's so many bugs. Let's see if that helps with the smell. Oh. Nope. Now we can see what I'm working with. Rory hosted a wake at his pub for the victims of Wednesday. I think he was just trying to show off. He got arrested last year for Dalen, and the police broke his hand, so suddenly he's all political. Stanley and I sat in the car for a long time, watching the front door swallow all the black suits until the pub looked like it was filled with ink. Stanley opened the car door, but I grabbed his arm and asked him to take me to our tree. I felt a crippling anxiety that if I went into that black pub, I'd never see the sky again. Stanley didn't say a word. He just started the car and we drove away. That's it? Is that all you got? Oh, you bastard. Need to figure something out. The bugs are still there. Jesus! Almost there, Leonor. 
Almost there, love. Mother Mary, Paddy has been killed. The British papers named it the Boxing Day Raid. But it wasn't a raid. Around here they're calling it the Wren's Day Massacre. Seven people shot down on the day after Christmas. I don't know what they're meeting about and I don't want to know. They were all violent men except for Stanley's father. What, what was Paddy Whitaker doing there? And how did he hear about the meeting? What, was he trying to talk them out of whatever they were planning? I need to find Stanley. He must be going through hell. Oh, shit! Jesus. I can do this again. Step at a time. Please tell me what you want. I've done everything I could. Uh, everything. Haven't I done enough? Haven't I? Haven't I done enough? Oh, please. Do you know who I am, boy? I... You're Leonor's father. Michael O'Shea. You know my name, but do you know who I am? Yeah. I know exactly who you are. I'm afraid of this. I was there at the Rensday Massacre. When your father died. I didn't agree with the man. I thought he was naive. He called me a terrorist and a criminal. But he said it to my face. I respected him. That's why I agreed to meet with him that day. You agreed? You think my father told the police? Is that it? I know exactly who it was. That's why I'm here. Rory Cochran is a police informant. Rory? They turned him after his arrest, dealing drugs of his own pub. No! He's a mate! There's, there's no way!
What do you want from me? Leonor. I need to know she's gonna be with a man who can take care of his obligations. Take care of his family. I would. I will. I'm gonna give you a chance to prove it. So you tell me, are you gonna do what needs to be done? God help us all.